Welcome everyone to Medicine Buddha this evening. My name is Eric and I will be uh, helping to hold down the community-led facilitation aspect this evening along with my dear comrade Karen Ziegler holding down tech hosting. Uh, if you really knew me, um, you'd know that nowadays, you know, my healed and healing relationship with Jesus and my healed and healing relationship with Medicine Buddha, they, they're, they're not the same, but they're heading in the right direction together nowadays. And um, so thank you all for um, enjoying that that good news with me. Um, hello and welcome. If this is your first time in this space, I'm not Lama Rod. Normally this is held down by Lama Rod, but we're also fortunate to have the opportunity uh, to hold this space together and the practice together in spiritual friendship as community whenever Lama Rod is away. And so we're doing this good work, but Lama Rod uh, who has, of course, enabled us all to receive the profound blessings of this lineage, um, not just his Indo-Tibetan Vajrayana lineage, but also the lineage of the Black prophetic tradition that he embodies and is braiding and incorporating these teachings in so many profound ways. And so I just want to lift up Lamarad's generosity and creative audacity uh, on this day as well. And please, if this is your first time in this space, my, the most important thing that I have to say at this moment is, um, please feel fully empowered to show up in whatever way is conducive to your actual freedom and liberation and be gentle with yourself and do your best to, uh, bring peace and rest to any of those voices saying that you should be showing up some other way, that other people in these boxes are showing up another way. Does that undermine the validity of my freedom? And, and that's okay, bring all those folks in. They're welcome, they're welcome. They just need a little reassurance, I think, for me, speaking for myself. Yes, you really do have permission to just be who you are. And we all have permission to undertake the profound training of allowing each other to be who we are at the same time, twofold. Hmm. Yeah, so whether the screen's on or off, whether you have any idea what Medicine Buddha is about, um, that's okay. There is no need to blunt or dull any of your valid intuitions. Um, this practice and this space. I don't know, I don't think we get very far if we can't hold the truth of those kinds of things. So yeah, may truth and permission reign up in here. And oh, it's just so good. I'm just going to take a second to ground myself a little bit and look at the pictures and the names and the boxes. So many friends of so many years. I can't believe we're all still doing this together, y'all. And of course, so many new friends who I just hope you receive any benefit whatsoever, whether you come to these sessions frequently, once in a blue moon, you're just watching the recordings. It may be a benefit, period. Um, yeah. I've been just opening my heart for the past week to try to have a kind of spontaneous but attuned relationship. Spontaneous, attuned, but also honest uh, relationship with how I can show up with all of you here today and maybe speak some power, maybe offer some care. And I have no idea if the direction we're going to head is what you actually need. Um, this is where Medicine Buddha has been guiding me this week. And yeah, whether that resonates with you or not, 
Um, I just feel very grateful to be in a space where people are taking time out of their day and uh, <clears throat> to come here and do this kind of thing of all things. And I'm just feeling in this moment, oh, and also if you really knew me, I cry all the time. We know this, so I won't, I won't labor on that, but I just cry all the time. So it's gonna happen. And I especially cry when I think about the revolutionary aspect of what's going on here. And that's okay, that's a big word. I don't wanna put that word on anyone. That doesn't, if that word doesn't feel earned or deserved, or like where's the material action to back up the spiritual cliche, like rock on with that critique. I value that profoundly. <laughs> um, but for, for this one, for this one here today, uh, the revolutionary aspect of what we're doing here. And for that reason, my heart is just wanting to uh, extend and reach out to anyone in this space who uh, may have been working these kinds of practices. I don't, maybe, it's, maybe you come from a more mindfulness-based situation. Maybe you come from all the prophetic, shamanic, magic traditions. Maybe you're inspired by earth-based practice. Maybe you have no idea what all those labels and like modes and methods mean, but you just are, are here. If there's any of us today who feel like, why am I doing this? And why is it so hard? And does this, am I just killing time? Does any of this actually contribute to my own freedom, let alone the freedom of anyone else in the world? And anyone who is struggling with that doubt, I just honor you and I see you and I appreciate you. And I honor the intelligence of those questions, even though they're pretty rough, but in my experience, those, those questions can be pretty rough for me when they happen and they do. And uh, today I'm able to say this, next week I may not be, and I may need someone else in this community to be able to say this, but I just wanna sit here in full honesty and just affirm that uh, I think you're changing your life and the lives of people around you by showing up to things like this in ways that you may never understand fully. And I don't really have much nowadays to like, I just feel like I'm so incompetent in so many ways, but like <laughs> on the good days, I do just, all I have is conviction. healing is real, that freedom is real, that liberation is possible. Not because I subscribe to any ideological or fancy sounding concepts or anything like that, but because I am still here. <laughs> And I don't know if I can say I really feel freer every day, but I do feel freer. <clears throat> and so I just wanna name the energetic labor that it requires to hold and tend our own doubt in all of this work. And like what a sophisticated achievement it is even to like have such thoughts you know, and to tread such waters. And by sophisticated, I just mean like honest, you know. Whew. Well, okay, I got 15 messages. I should probably check what's going on here. Oh, hi friends. Hmm. Yeah, thank you for all your contributions in the chat. So, um, yeah, whether that 
whether that um, does anything to pacify or maybe sand the sharp edges off of any doubt you may be feeling, that's okay. But I just want y'all to know that from my heart this evening, I am practicing in honor and celebration of you. You don't have to believe it, but I really think we're doing something incredible together in this space. And I feel it. And may all doubt be honored and respected for the ways it has kept us safe when we haven't been safe before, for the ways that it informs our discernment when we've been fooled before. And may we all learn something really important about the carceral state from the intensity of our own doubts. <clears throat> Whew. And face it squarely and hold each other's hands. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so I hope, nah, you know, I'm, I'm working on not apologizing for who I am so much anymore. So I'm just going to leave it and not be ashamed about what I have to say. <laughs> Thank you all for your grace in the meantime. But y'all, I don't know if you've read this book, uh, The New Saints by La Mirada Owens. Okay. It's pretty good. And today I, there's this whole chapter on prayer. And, you know, prayer is such a, a huge part of what we do in this space. And so uh, I'm going to read through. There's this outer, inner, and secret stages of prayer as a way to ground us in practice, offer some instruction, a la Lama Rad, on how to relate to Medicine Buddha or the divine in relationship to prayer as well. And whether that's just as a refresher for whoever needs it, or if you're in this space and aren't so familiar with how we roll and how we do things, um, my intention is for these instructions to help ground you in the uh, culture of care and also the thoroughgoing intention of prayer in this space. Um, and I also just wanted to say, you know, this chapter on prayer in particular, and in the introduction to this book, Lamarad thanks the Medicine Buddha community in particular, especially. And I think the ways in which everyone has shown up to co collaborate and co create with Lamarad to, to like get clear on what like new saint being like this path to taking Dharma seriously and in the broadest imaginable context, no boundaries, unconditional. I just hope everyone in this space feels proud for how they've contributed to these teachings being circulated in the world now. Wow, that's a really happy thought for me. Okay, so we're going to get underway and I just invite folks to go ahead and settle into whatever posture reflects the fullness of your power and dignity and sovereignty and beauty in this moment. If that means you're sitting, if that means you're lying down in a posture of royal ease, that's beautiful. If you're standing up or pacing around, beautiful too. Settling into whatever posture can help you contain this good news.
and enter into this really, really vital work together. That's my invitation. Camera on or off? Medicine Buddha doesn't take it personally. Yeah. <sighs> and so Lama Rod says, on the outer stage of approaching prayer. I don't have a set schedule for prayer. I pray when I feel I need to. Sometimes I feel something in my experience that needs tending or I am called to offer prayer for someone connected to me who needs support. Other times I feel the suffering of others in the world and I move to offer prayer on their behalf to disrupt their experience of suffering or sometimes I wake up in the morning and find myself slipping right into prayer. If someone asks me to pray for them, I start moving into this process right at that very moment. And of course, as we're moving through this, um, Karen will be dropping the prayer doc in the chat and everyone is invited as they feel led and inspired to offer prayers in that document. When I'm called into prayer, I start by naming why I'm, I am beginning to pray and my intention for prayer. My intention for prayer is always to help reduce suffering for myself and others. This is the awakening of awakened care. And I begin to understand that to care for beings, I must develop an intention for them to be free from suffering. Next, I locate myself and notice where my mind is wandering and I call my awareness back into the moment. I must be present to start the journey of attuning to the divine. After I've called myself in, I anchor to the earth. I do this by noticing the weight of my body contacting my seat or the floor under me and slowly shifting my attention down to the earth, grounding myself and taking a few moments to experience the earth's care. I begin all of my ceremonies and rituals by touching the earth, recognizing it, recognizing it as the anchor, ally, and primary support of the work I'm doing. Once I feel anchored, I shift my attention toward the uncomfortable experiences that motivate me into prayer, such as fear, concern, and anxiety. I release as much of this energy as possible by inhaling deeply into every pore and opening my body into these energies before dissolving them and then releasing them with an exhale. After touching the earth, I like to touch my body gently, reminding myself that I am moving into prayer embodied, while also asking the earth and my seat to keep me grounded as I open to higher frequency energies. I focus on neutral parts of my body. I like to gently touch my thighs, knees, and forearms, and to massage my hands. I also use this space to acknowledge that my body is an extension of the earth and like the earth, it is my primary support. There can be no work without my body. The inner stage touching the divine. 
once I feel grounded, I turn my attention to yearning. Yearning is the energy that drives me into prayer. I often feel it as an intense desire for beings to be elevated from personal suffering and collective suffering. This yearning is an expression of my awakened care, and it is this care that centers my prayer in deep care for myself and others. I imagine the energy of this yearning filling my body and mind with warm white light. Rainbow light, if you prefer. I take a few minutes to sit in this light and warmth. It begins to open into my experience of the divine. When I'm connecting to the present and resting in the expression of this yearning and awakened care in my body and mind, I begin to slowly allow the experience to open into the stillness of the essence. That essence, your own essence, becomes my experience of the divine. I try to dwell in this space for as long as possible. I'll allow the essence to take shape into whatever form that is most appropriate for me, be it an image, vision, or other experiences of God, the mother, a Buddha, or any spirit or deity that is an expression of awakened care. I let this figure spring from my yearning to disrupt suffering. And just holding the clarity of those instructions, I invite us to move into our opening invocation mantra. Om Enma Sange Kino Soha. And today, this is just an invitation, ignore it if it doesn't make sense or doesn't feel good, but today I really am going to, I'm really feeling soha, svaha in Sanskrit, right? The hell yes. <laughs> As an antidote to doubt as an antidote to the intensity with which the carceral state calls the validity of what we are doing here into question, we say svaha, soha, at the end of each of our mantras. Let it be so. For real. Okay, so I'll begin with an OM, an extended OM, and I'll also cl close with an extended OM. And we'll do three uh, mantras, three of these opening mantras. Again, beginning with OM. <clears throat> oh. Sangye ki no so ha Om en la sangye ki Om Namah 
Sange Ki Let Medicine Buddha spring from our yearning to disrupt suffering, no matter what. And as we proceed, if you haven't had an opportunity to enter any prayers that are arising for you in the prayer doc, you're welcome to do so now. Of course, if you have prayers that are resonating for you, that are spilling forth, and you do not feel led to put them in the prayer doc, that is fine too. They're included. Don't you worry. And we continue. Often at this point, my experience of the divine is being held in this ocean of awakened care. And I feel it's emerging intelligence as God or even a wisdom deity. When I feel this expression of divinity, I begin offering my wants and needs into this energy like flowers offered into the ocean. Sometimes this is a mental offering, and then at other times it is a verbal one. I pray for what is immediate, urgent, and close to me, as well as what seems more abstract and far away. This allows me to dwell in the experience of care for myself and others, and is also a form of self-care. I give myself permission to imagine the end of suffering without doubting that this ending will happen. So now we'll begin to offer the first, first part of our main mantra. Tayata om bekenze bekenze maha bekenze radza samungate soha. Like this, I pray for the end of pain and suffering, and the root, the root of pain and suffering. And I release the energy of this prayer out to all the world so that we may all be liberated. Soha. May it be so as swiftly as possible. Soha. You deserve to feel good about saying soha. You deserve to take yourself seriously when you say soha. Within the family tree of my own personal lineage that also practices medicine, Buddha, there's this teaching that while we're doing this mantra, may we just envision a celestial palace in the center of which there is something that is worth dancing around along with all sentient beings in the cosmos, celebrating, affirming, bowing down, offering flowers, soha, soha.
And in this moment where nothing else may seem legitimate or like nothing else is making a dent in the challenges that you are enduring every single day or on behalf of others, just know that in this moment that I will never, I'll never get this time back, right? But I'm making this choice to be here with y'all like incense, like a stick of incense burning down. And I offer my life force through this mantra so that it may be of some benefit to anyone in this space or anyone you love. And I make this offering sincerely as the carceral state must end. Om te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajasum gati soha te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajasum gati soha te ata um begen ze begen Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. Te ata um begen ze begen ze ma begen ze rajas um gade soha. 
Theata um begen se begen se ma begen se ratsusum gade soha. Theata um begen se begen se ma begen se ratsusum gade soha. Theata um begen se begen se ma begen se ratsusum gade soha. Theata um begen se begen se ma begen se ratsusum gade soha. Theata um begen se begen se ma begen se ratsusum gade soha. Theata um begen se begen se ma begen se ratsusum gade soha. Theata um begen se begen se ma begen se ratsusum gade soha. And now we'll turn our attention to our prayer requests. Invoking the full power of Medicine Buddha in their entourage, their emanations, secondary emanations, and Medicine Buddha's infinite healing activities, which are none other than the expression of your own mind. We invoke all the angels and archangels and beings capable of protection. We ask all beings who are not able to assist in the healing and execution of these prayers to wait outside the circle. We invite every resource that we have to draw upon as homecomings, guides and mentors, wisdom sources, communities, the earth, our ancestors, silence and ourselves. We hold no power or possibility in reserve for some other time because this is the time, here and now. Please be with us, be with everyone who is struggling. Hold every single doubt in this space. May the doubt move through and find its most liberated and emancipating expression as swiftly as possible. And we invoke the actuality of all of these beings seen and unseen to assist us in carrying out these heartfelt prayers. Prayers for the Diggs family as the matriarch entered the bardo and will be interred tomorrow. Prayers for me as I go through some medical tests. Prayers for all of us in the Sangha and in the world that we accept the help available on our path to healing and freedom. For Bruce, who's healing from hip surgery and preparing to treat cancer. Prayers for the health of Kirsten's parents and my sisters, Leah, Jen, Jen, and Abby. Prayers that my depression may lift and that all those being oppressed by neo-colonialism and the carceral state find liberation. Prayers that my daughter R continue to heal from her overwhelm and have a joyful and confident transition back to school. Prayers for my broken, open heart. Prayers for those abandoned by family members. 
Prayers that my uncle M be fully cured of his cancer. Prayers for world leaders, movement leaders, and other influential people to, to make wise decisions for the highest good, for justice, climate justice, to stop genocide, reduce suffering, etc. Prayers that I experience an abundance of resources so that my daughter and I can stay in this home for years to come. Prayers of gratitude for all the seen and unseen that are holding me, supporting me, and leading me. Prayers that my Aunt Megan be completely healed, vibrant, and that the cancer leaves her body. Prayers for my partner and I's ongoing healing from early traumas. Prayers that our siblings on earth who are not physically safe experience peace and refuge, and that their descendants experience peace on earth. Prayers for N and R, their well being, good health, awakening, and complete liberation in this life. For Lama Rod's complete and swift liberation and the complete liberation for the Bhumi Sparsha community. For abolition of all systems of control and harm, and complete freedom for all beings in all realms and timelines right at this moment. Prayers also for me that I recover from all that has been difficult and that I am held deeply and supported for all that is to come while Mercury is in retrograde and beyond that. May what is difficult for us lead us to freedom. May all forms of violence end and in doing so free us all. Aseo. Prayers for healing for all who walk in my door. Prayers that my hip heals so I can sit in peace. Prayers for me as I navigate finding our new housing as my current living situation of the past five years has become unexpectedly and suddenly untenable. That I may land somewhere that is not only that I can afford, but which also feels easeful, nurturing, and like a good place for my body and spirit to inhabit. Prayers for young Emmett, a sweet being suffering a lot from Crohn's disease. May he find some direction to find relief so he can live his life. May I also find some space within my own chronic ailments and rediscover life outside of dealing with illness. Prayers for all dealing with the medical system. Prayers for myself, may I know what I need to do. Prayers for L, may they feel my love and appreciation. Prayers for M, may she get all the money she needs and be safe. Prayers for my heart. May it remain open for love and prayers for my beautiful monsters. May we become friends and grow and find the essence of love. Prayers for unhoused people facing hostility from the institutions that failed them in the first place and continue to visit violence and cruelty upon them now. May all beings experiencing housing, experiencing a lack of housing peril May all beings experiencing housing peril know the love and both material and emotional support. May all women and femmes suffering at the hands of oppressive states know peace, dignity, and strength. May their agency be protected. May they know love and solidarity. Prayers for letting go of that which does not serve. Prayers that I may be gentle with myself and others. Prayers that I may find the roommates I need to be able to head out on my ancestral healing journey. Prayers that I may know how to best serve my mother so that she may feel supported and loved just as she is. And may we be able to live near each other in loving support, helping each other heal. Prayers that I heal fully from the COVID in my body. Prayers that my family and I stay healthy and that we all get the rest we need. Prayers for Nellie, Kathan, and Nicole. May all the little ones and the light they bring to the world be safe and protected. Prayers for my ongoing cancer treatments. Prayers for M and R to experience healing and freedom. Prayers and deep healing to MH for her upcoming pituitary adenoma surgery. May the surgery be successful and praying for her full recovery. May she also receive all the love and support she needs to support her part partner with dementia. I hope that she receives some relief from the intensity of her caregiving responsibilities. Prayers for my father as he recovers from a heart attack in the midst of cancer treatment. Prayers for my daughter and all the young people challenging our gender binaries and assumptions. Prayers for Jacqueline who has crossed over to the land of the ancestors. 
May her journey be well met. Prayers for Nancy that she may feel held by all gathered here, both the visible and the unseen beings who are always with her. Prayers for Elizabeth that she finds healing and wholeness with the ancestors. And I offer my most heartfelt prayers to all young people and teenagers in this country, in my neighborhood, in my state, and in the world. May they be protected from all harm and may all adults in their lives understand their unique and singular contribution to our shared liberation. To T, may she find the keys that she's looking for. And on behalf of all of those who have offered prayers, and all of the prayers not entered here, we lift them up with all of the trust and confidence that we can muster here together. Please, beings capable of helping, help us. All the prayers of healing just invoked, please make it as so, so as swiftly as possible without delay. May all beings who need healing and protection be comforted and receive the full power of these, of these prayers. And may all beings know that they are not alone in the work of getting free. Before we begin our last section of mantra, I just want to offer more instruction from the new saints. When I feel I have offered all my needs, I offer everything else into the divine, my joy, sorrow, fear, gratitude, everything I hide away from, everything I am too attached to, everything I'm ashamed of, this often feels like a final expression of vulnerability. I add fuel to my prayer, energizing it as things begin to shift around me. By opening wide into transparency and letting the divine and other intelligent energies begin acting on my behalf, I get out of my own way. Um, te ata um, begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um, begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. Te ata um begin, te begin, te ma begin, te raza sum gati soha. 
Turning briefly to these concluding instructions from Lama Rod. At this point, I slowly let go of doing anything and rest my awareness within the expansive ocean of emptiness as the divine expression itself. I consider this a period of integration. I allow energy to settle and I relax any tension that has arisen while moving through prayer. As always, if this is where the biggest medicine is for you in this moment, please practice freedom and stay right here. If it feels good, it can bring some gentle movement and motion back into the body. Maybe applying heat if and where it feels good. And a little sip of water or tea. And work in the energy and channels and such and such. <clears throat> Good to stay hydrated. <clears throat> Before we move into Shanti Deva's prayer, and I'll go ahead and just queue up uh, if there's any, if there's three. Uh, courageous souls who would like to offer Shanti Deva's prayer to mix it up, community-led style a little bit. Go ahead and just. Oh, now, now I stressed like most people out and like <laughs> the minority are like. Hey, I'll that? go. Okay, wonderful. So, but before we move into that, um, Mama Ra just closes out this chapter. Y'all, this book, I'm telling, like, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You think you're an expert on something, and then you're like, whoop, nope. <laughs> I'm dedicating merit. Lama Rod says, I usually end with a simple final prayer. 
that any beneficial positive energy arising out of this practice be dedicated to all beings for final liberation from suffering. And so, Andy, would you like to offer? Yes, may I be a protector for those without protection, a leader for those who journey, a boat, a bridge, and a passage for those desiring the further shore. May the pain and suffering of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed, just like space and the great elements such as Earth. May I always be a support for all the lives of, for all the boundless creatures. And until they pass away from pain, may I also be a support for all the life of all the very beings that reach into the ends of space. And Mark is next. May I be a protector to those without protection, a leader for those who journey, and a boat, a bridge, a passage for those desiring the further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. And may I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. Just like space and the great elements such as Earth, may I always support the life of all the boundless creatures. And until they pass away from pain, may I also be the source of life for all the realms of varied beings that reach into the ends of space. May I be a protector to those without protection, a leader for those who journey, and a boat, a bridge, a passage for those desiring the further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. Just like space and the great elements such as earth, may I always support the life of all the boundless creatures and until they pass away from pain, may I also be the source of life for all the realms of varied beings that reach into the ends of space. Sealed. It's not as good as the chimes that Lamarad does at the end, but absent chimes are like snaps. <sighs> <sighs> I just want to say thank you all for your practice today. Um, thank you for the chance to just um, show up in that, uh, you know, good old unvarnished, vulnerable, unfiltered way that we do. It is such a gift in my life to be able to gather with y'all so regularly throughout all the waves of birth and death. And I have to roll out soon, but I don't want to foreclose it in case anyone wants to stay after and like have the Medicine Buddha after dark or whatever. Um, but thank you all for being here. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for your prayers. I just thank you for any honesty that you were able to do in relationship with your own doubt. And I don't know what that means or looks like. I'm not like, I don't want to put upon anyone that I hope all their doubts are finished right now. You know, it feels, it feels like something cruel about that. You know, if that's true, then that's wonderful. But um, may our doubt be teaching us and always pointing us back to who we really are because it is so easy to forget. So thank you all so much. And oh, I'm so over, I'm seeing 18 new messages. I'm overwhelmed. I'll look at them when they come down on the recording, but <laughs> thank you all very much. And I believe Lama Rod will be back uh, next week and Look forward to just continuing with all of you. Until then, be very, very, very well. Take care of each other and yourselves. <laughs>